Hello and welcome to another Flying Reporter Aerodrome Review. Uh, we're on the climb out from Earl's Cove and we're on our way to Beckles. A few of you have asked me to visit Beckles, somewhere I haven't been to before. It's the UK's most easterly airfield, situated about 20 miles to the southeast of Norwich. The Flying Reporter Aerodrome Review is sponsored by membership organisation AOPA and uh, this video is sponsored by the UK Arm of that uh, organisation which I'm a member of and I hope you'd consider being too and there'll be details later in this video of how to sign up with a uh, fantastic 25% discount. In terms of arriving at Beckles, the airspace is pretty clear. The only hazards to be aware of are Norwich-controlled airspace to the north, a restricted area to the south, and the fact that Beckles is an active parachuting site. So because they have parachuting here, uh, clearly that takes a bit of thinking about if you're flying in. There is an air traffic control, there's an air-to-ground operator, and that means obviously you're going to have to listen carefully to the information they give you. On their website, they tell you that there's kind of a five-minute rule. If you hear that, I think, parachutes are about to be dropping, then you should wait five minutes and certainly wait until you're told that all the parachutists are on the ground. Basically, if there's parachuting going on at the time that you're arriving, you need to hold off somewhere and, uh, and join when the, when the parachutes are safely on the ground. For departures, if the parachutes are dropping, all ground movements come to a stop. Beckles is PPR and one of the benefits of calling up before you visit is you can find out what parachuting activity is planned. Today, like most Tuesdays and Wednesdays, there is none, so I don't have to worry about that for my arrival. Beckles Radio, good afternoon. Golf Bravo Mike, India Victor, 15 miles to the southwest. Inbound request aerodrome information. Brother Mike India Victor, Beckles Radio, we're on zero 09 right hand with a QFE of 1026, currently at uh, one aircraft in the circuit. Zero 09 right hand circuit, uh, QFE 1026, Golf India Victor. Because of the parachuting, generally speaking, downwind joins are recommended here. I did consider a base leg join on my track, but there's a couple of aircraft in the circuit, so I route to join at the beginning of the downwind leg to make room. Uh, Beckles got Pop Tango downwind, runway 09, Pop Tango. Got Philly Victor, four miles to the south, and intend to join right hand downwind, runway 09, uh, giving way to Pop Tango. On final for runway 09, you can see the solar farm, which can give you some turbulence on a hot or windy day. The runway is about two-thirds tarmac and a third grass, but the grass is out of action today due to recent rain. The hard part of the runway is in great condition, though, having been resurfaced not so long ago. Now you'll have noticed that I didn't make a great job of that landing and used up far too much of the runway, which wasn't a great move given the length. In the Poolis flight guide right now, they only give the full combined grass and tarmac landing distance for 09, showing it to be 715 metres. Just be aware that the landing distance available on the hard section of 09 is 400 metres, so that's quite short for an arrow and worth bearing in mind if you're coming in when the grass is out of action. After landing, as usual, follow the Charlie signs to the Aerodrome Cafe where you can pay your landing fee. The price is extremely reasonable actually and it even comes with a free drink. We'll come back to the aviation features of the aerodrome shortly, but before flying here today, I was pretty busy with meetings, so I'm ready to get some rest. Luckily, Beckles has some on-site accommodation. Now, I haven't been here long. Uh, I've checked in with the airfield. They've given the keys to my accommodation, and I've already had a first impression of the airfield, and I can't wait to show you it tomorrow. But first, first, here we are. There is a tomahawk in this garden, and this is my accommodation. I have a tomahawk <laughs> in my garden, and I'm staying in 
Now there is a name to this, and I've already forgot. I think it's called Mustang. I'm staying in Mustang, and it's a well, it's it's a static caravan, isn't it? I suppose you'd call it. But I mean, it just looks quite ordinary outside if it were not for the tomahawk out the front. But wait until you see this. Just, just you wait. Look at this. Now this has been put together with someone, I would say, who's got a very good eye for design. All the walls are panelled, some of them black, some of them in a, in a different design, a black ceiling, uh, mood lighting, um, lovely sofa area here with a widescreen television. Um, the central heating. This is not like the kind of static caravan that we saw outside, is it? In the kitchen area, we've got a fridge freezer, a microwave, a coffee machine. Got a full-size sink, full-size um, oven and hob, and all the things that you might need. Glasses. Um, they've put some milk in the fridge for me. There's coffee here somewhere. There's plates and pans and cooking utensils. And then through to the sleeping area, chaise long here, and the bed here, which looks very comfy, right at the end. Uh, and there's a little bath next to the bed and a partitioned off um, shower and toilet area. I mean, this is really, really comfortable. Beckles has three tastefully decorated static caravans for visitors who want an overnight stay. They come with a double bed and sofa bed. There's also a very basic B&B type cabin if you end up getting stuck here and just need a functional room for the night. Everything is self-catering, so I need to get some supplies in. But the nearest supermarket is four miles away. But that's not a problem here at Beckles. Like many places in some parts of Europe or even in America, they've got hire cars that you can make use of. And um, I've got use of this little uh, Fiesta here. And that means that I can go to the local shop, get some grub, and uh, I'm all sorted. And if I wanted to do some sightseeing, I can use it as well. So yeah, we're off to a good start. I'm just going to the supermarket, but you could equally use the car to explore the local area, perhaps visiting the seaside towns of Southwold and Lowestoft. Well, I had a very uh, peaceful and refreshing evening. The bed was comfortable, the shower refreshing, the heating kept me warm, everything you need from an overnight stay. But enough about the chalet or static caravan. This is supposed to be an aerodrome review. Let's get reviewing. But I haven't had breakfast yet and that gives me an excuse to check out the on-site cafe. If you're staying overnight, breakfast is included and I'm starving. <laughs> so what have I got here? Uh, full English? Well, doctor won't be happy if uh, I have that. Large full English, he definitely won't be happy if I have that. Can I have a veggie breakfast? Might go for salmon and scrambled eggs. That sounds perhaps a bit more of a healthy option. What do you think? As well as a range of breakfast, the cafe also serves lunch dishes such as fish platter, plowman's, jacket potato, salads, baguettes, sandwiches and soup. It's not a huge menu, but there should be something here for most tastes. While I've been filling my face, the aerodrome has started to come to life and we really should begin taking a good look around. Now, when you come to Beckles, you'll realise that it's quite unlike most other aerodromes that you might visit in the UK. First impressions feels a bit like Sandown on the Isle of Wight except there's no sweary manager giving you insults left, right and centre. It strikes me that Beckles has set it up with the customer experience in mind. The customer comes first. Lots of places to sit down and relax. They've made it into a bit of a village here. As well as the comfortable seating and various corners to hide away in, there's a double-decker bus where you can let the kids run about or sit to have some refreshments. There's also a large teepee for dining and relaxing. Just look inside. It's all carefully styled with an emphasis around 
being welcoming and comfortable. I don't know about you, but when you visit places ordinarily in the UK, do you not feel that they really, really don't want you there? It's as if flying in, you've somehow been some kind of nuisance and they're putting up barriers and obstacles left, right and centre to almost dissuade you from coming in the first place. But here, it's very different. <laughs> no chance. Hey, stop, stop looking. It's all the brainchild of Ava Gallup, who brought the lease to the airfield with her husband, Tim, in 2019. So what is it that you're trying to do here? I think we want it to be a little bit different, all inclusive. Um, so when I, my husband got to me about let's do it, I said, well, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it differently and properly. Um, we want it to be all inclusive so men and women both enjoy the airfield. So that's why we set up also the cafe and the restaurant and we get a lot of the general public who come up and we fortunately, fingers crossed, don't get that many complaints because it is a very busy airfield. You've made a place that is welcoming. Yes. To pilots, to visitors, to men, women. Yes. Young and old. Yes. How are you able to do that when I go to so many other places and, and they seem to be very unwelcoming places that really seem to be struggling to get by, actually? We've put a lot of investment in, for mm. starters, and we've been very lucky to have a team around us who love the aviation but also like the other sides of what we're doing here. So that's why we put in the, um, the cafe and restaurant, and it's on a lovely sunny day. You know, people, you see people sitting there and actually enjoying it. Are you lucky and fortunate with planning, the community, residents, noise, that kind of thing? Because I hear so many aerodromes struggling with these things and they just cannot do anything no. to improve matters. Well, we have been quite fortunate because this obviously has been an aerodrome for such a long time and there used to be Beckles Heliport, which was behind here. So, of course, it had the planning for so many movements and for helis. So, from that point of view, we've been quite fortunate. Um, and we do make it very inclusive, so we, our restaurant is very reasonable in pricing, which helps the local community, because they all come up and they get a different feel for what it's like to be um, experienced general aviation. We, people love to come and sit here and watch them parachuting on a Saturday. They love to see the planes coming in, the helicopters and so on and so forth. So we've made it inclusive and we've tried to include the community in that. So we do, we'll always get complaints, but we try and work around them. All of this, all of the design is all you, is that right? Does that all come from you? Yes, yeah. Um, we, I always, I always tell my husband what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> And we end up doing it anyhow. But yes, I mean, he has some say in stuff. Obviously, when I'm saying I'm going to spend this amount of money and so on and so forth. But yes, the design side of it is me, but all the people around me are the ones that help to make it happen. This aerodrome review has been sponsored by AOPA UK, the membership organisation for pilots, aircraft owners and operators. I'm a member because I'm concerned about the decline in general aviation, the closure of airfields and access to airspace. They'd also be there should I get into bother and need some advice. If you care about these things too, then why not join up yourself? Right now, Flying Reporter followers can get a 25% discount on new one- or two-year memberships by using the QR code on your screen, the pop-up link at the top of your screen, or the link in the video description. Beckles has both a fixed-wing and rotary PPL flying school, Virage Aviation. There's also a microlight and gyrocopter school, Mid Anglia Light Sport Aviation, and a parachuting centre, UK Parachuting. I do like to let disabled people know how accessible aerodromes are when I visit them. There is some hard aircraft parking that you can make use of on request at Beckles, and you can probably access the cafe but the rest of the ground on site is made up of loose stone, which would be very difficult in a wheelchair. There's also no dedicated disabled toilet here at the moment either. We'll end with fuel details. They offer Avgas and Jet A1. They will come and fuel your aircraft for you. When I visited, the price of the Avgas was a little higher than average, but they tell me that they've since had a delivery, and at the time of publication, the price is about average for South East England. 
I've genuinely enjoyed my short stop here at Beckles and I've already told my son Bertie and my husband James that we'll be coming back here for a weekend sometime soon. They've got it just right here. A great experience for flying visitors and local people alike. Thank you for watching this aerodrome review. If you'd like me to visit your home-based airfield or if you're an aerodrome manager and would like me to pay you a visit, then please do get in touch. Don't forget to sign up for your AOPA UK discount and I'll see you next time. Until then, fly safely, my friends.